Hey, what's going on guys? Jonathan, and today I want to talk to you about the iPhone XR. The iPhone XR is Apple's fun and colorful approach to bringing a budget version of the iPhone XS and XS Max to consumers. Unfortunately though, it hasn't really been getting the best press because people are saying that in terms of market value, it just doesn't add up. So I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. So I popped out my SIM card from my iPhone XS Max and I put it into the iPhone XR and surprisingly, I have more positives to say about this phone than negatives. In fact, I would go as far as saying this might be the best iPhone Apple has ever made. And I'm gonna tell you why. The iPhone XR comes in white, black, blue, yellow, coral, and product red. The build quality and construction of the XR is very much like the 10, XS, and XS Max with its glass front and glass back design. The only real difference here is the aluminum trim around the sides versus the stainless steel found on the 10, XS, and XS Max. In a way, I prefer the aluminum trim on the iPhone XR versus the stainless on the iPhone XS and XS Max. While stainless is a bit better feeling, it's more durable and it just looks better because it's more premium, the stainless definitely shows smudges and fingerprints a lot more than aluminum, plus the stainless scratches easier more than aluminum. Plus, if you look at the bottom of the iPhone XR compared to the XS and XS Max, it's actually more symmetrical, which I don't really understand. I've been using the iPhone XR without a case or screen protector since I picked it up, and I have to say it's held up very well. I don't see any scratching on the back side or the front side, which is definitely a plus. For me, the best reason to get the iPhone XR is the form factor. In my previous video, which was a love it or hate it approach, I said the reason I regretted buying the XS Max was due to the lack of features to take advantage of having a larger display. Also for the missing functionality that made managing that display size a little bit easier. While the iPhone XS is perfectly okay, after going back to that size from the XS Max, it does feel a little bit small. And this is where the XR fits in perfectly. It gives you the benefit of having a larger display while still being completely manageable with a single hand if you need it. I honestly love the form factor and size of the iPhone XR. I really, really do. I just don't understand what Apple was thinking by putting the XR in between the XS and XS Max in terms of size. Personally, I think the XR should have been where the XS is and the XS should have been bumped up to the XR. But hey, that's just me. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section. The display on the iPhone XR is one of the most controversial aspects of this phone, being that it's technically a glorified 720p IPS LCD display. We're in a time where budget Android devices are coming equipped with excellent 1080p displays. And in the case of the iPhone XR, you can get an Android device with a Quad HD display for even cheaper. Now I'm not gonna defend Apple and say this is excusable when it's not. The whole liquid retina sales pitch is just marketing hype to say that they were able to bend the LCD around the edges to reduce light bleed. And I do respect that and it's kind of cool. At the end of the day, it's nothing but a glorified slightly above 720p LCD panel. Here's the thing. While on paper the display sounds pretty bad in 2018, in person the display is great. I think there is some over sharpening going on with the stock OS applications, menus, and home screen since third party apps look a little different, but it's not terrible. Somehow, the YouTube app is doing some type of upscaling since you're able to play back content in 1080p and it looks great. On white screens, you can see the pixels in the text, but to me, it's still not a deal breaker. Off axis viewing is a bit of a problem since the display can dim and color shift quite a bit depending on the severity of the angle. This is definitely my biggest complaint when it comes to the display quality and in my opinion, for a phone with this kind of price, it shouldn't be this bad. The bezels on the iPhone XR are definitely larger than the ones found on the XS and XS Max, but honestly, it's not a big deal. Like I said in the beginning, I switched from the XS Max to the XR, and on everyday use, I've completely gotten used to the larger bezels on the iPhone XR, and even the display for the most part. I do like the OLED panels found on the XS and XS Max much better, but the iPhone XR is still completely doable. It's just something that's better seen in person than talked about. One area Apple didn't cheap out are on the internal specifications. The iPhone XR is rocking the same A12 chip its more expensive siblings are using, and while it's not the four gigabytes of RAM the other two have, it's still packing three gigabytes of RAM and functions excellent. Everything from basic tasks like web browsing to augmented gaming, 
The iPhone XR can handle pretty much any task with ease. I've been very impressed with the performance of this phone since it's nearly identical to the performance I was getting on the XS Max, given they do have the same chip. Consuming content isn't as good as the XS Max since the display is larger and of better quality, but for most people, it's gonna be just fine. Plus the iPhone XR has the same great speakers as the other models, so sound quality is on point. One area the iPhone XR pulls ahead of its pricier siblings is battery life. I mean, compared to the XS Max, it's not a drastic difference, but nonetheless, an improvement is an improvement, especially when this phone is cheaper. You also get wireless charging and fast charging. Just know you're gonna have to fork out extra money to get the right charger and cable, which is just stupid. You even get Face ID on the iPhone XR, which means front-facing portrait mode and an emoji support. Another big difference between the iPhone XR and the more expensive models comes down to the single camera on the back. The iPhone XS and XS Max feature a telephoto lens that is used for portrait mode. The iPhone XR uses a single camera design that features the same sensor and optics as the XS's main shooter. In fact, it's even able to accomplish portrait mode using software algorithms. The limitation is that it only works when a face is detected. If you do want to take a portrait mode shot of something that doesn't have a face, there are ways to accomplish this with third-party applications, which I can cover in a separate video. Camera quality is on par with the XS in every way, including the front-facing camera. The still images look great with plenty of detail and rich color. Dynamic range is excellent in 99% of situations, though just like the XS and XS Max, the flare control could be a bit better. Low light is good, but I wouldn't say it's great by any means. For most people, I think it's gonna be just fine, but don't expect Note 9 or Pixel 3-like performance. For video, we're looking at the same 4K 60 frames per second capabilities the more expensive models offer. You still get HDR video, which is something I honestly think people are going to be impressed with when it comes to buying this phone. While the front-facing camera is only 1080p, it can at least shoot 60 frames per second just like the 10s and 10s Max, which is pretty cool. So this is just a quick test of the front-facing camera of the iPhone XR. Same camera as the iPhone XS and XS Max, so you're gonna get the same quality. Same thing with the rear camera, same camera, same main shooter that is. So uh, yeah, let me know what do you guys think down below. Also, shout out to the designer of this hat. Fantastic. The iPhone XR is a very weird phone. On one hand, it's slightly overpriced and compared to the iPhone X, it seems like a downgrade. But on the other hand, if you look at who the iPhone XR was meant for, people upgrading from the iPhone 8 or earlier, then it's actually a great offering and a great deal. The fact that Apple hasn't skimped too much on the features and hardware while delivering a price that is cheaper than the iPhone XS and much cheaper than the XS Max is awesome. This is definitely a budget iPhone, not to be confused with a budget phone because Apple doesn't do budget like other companies do budget. When Apple releases a device that is cost efficient or budget, it's not to be compared to other devices on the market, but strictly what Apple has in their current lineups. In the future, when the iPhone XR gets a price cut or it starts to be sold from prepaid carriers at a discount, I think that's where the iPhone XR might become the ultimate budget phone, period. Until then, I could still easily recommend the iPhone XR. I mean, I switched to it from the XS Max and I really haven't looked back. It's the form factor and size that won me over, Plus, the colors are pretty eye-catching and definitely a conversation starter. But what do you guys think? I wanna know, let me know down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, drop it a thumbs up. I know I've been kinda MIA on YouTube and on social, but that's because I've been working with several companies in the background and I have a lot of cool stuff lined up that is in the pipeline. And if you don't wanna miss it, you're gonna wanna subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when that content drops. Really good stuff coming up. If you have any questions regarding the iPhone XR, hit me up on social or leave them down below. And of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.